thousand criminals, a hundred thousand plus fentanyl poisoning deaths. It's unacceptable. Enough is enough. This plan, which would also include HR2, the most secure border act in decades, puts the president on notice. Now is the time. This is the most important border security vote in 20 years. This vote right here not only cuts spending, but it shuts down the border in the disaster, the chaos, and the unacceptable level of death that our president has caused. This bill deserves our attention. I urge my colleagues to cut the spending, to keep the government open, and to shut down the border, and I yield back. I reserve. Back, the I reserve. Florida reserves the gentlewoman from Connecticut is recognized. I remind the gentleman from Texas that the eyes of the people of Texas are upon you uh, when you're thinking about uh, uh, really uh, 77,000 uh, seniors, uh, kids without any uh, uh, benefits from the Low Income Energy Assistance Program, and also uh, 14,000 teachers who will be gone from Texas schools. With that, let me yield one and a half minutes to the gentlewoman from New York, Ms. Clark. The gentlewoman from New York is recognized for one and a half minutes. Mr. Speaker, I rise on this day in opposition to the continuing resolution, which includes the Republican extreme and restrictive immigration and border security legislation, H.R. 2. This cruel legislation would force draconian restrictions and punishments on migrants and asylum seekers and set America's immigration priorities back decades. This bill would damage the asylum system, a process millions upon millions of vulnerable and desperate people and families have long depended on for their safety and their future. Instead of putting forth legislation that can pass the Senate and avert a government shutdown, extreme Republicans would rather hold an economy and border security hostage, throwing millions of lives into a tailspin. Let's be clear, any bill that would allow vulnerable migrant children to be inhumanely detained by Border Patrol for up to a month, to be ripped from their families and locked up from the world is unacceptable. And it is fundamentally un-American. To treat innocent people who are looking for a better life in our nation with such contempt such vitriol, such callousness, while also putting American families vulnerable to put food on their tables. That not, that's not leadership. It's called cowardice. Every American, no matter how long their families have called this country their own, should be outraged at the GOP embracing the Trump administration's failed and immoral border policies to keep the government open. Time has I yield back the balance the of my time. Gentlewoman yields back. The gentlewoman from Connecticut I reserves. Reserve. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I now yield to the gentleman from South Dakota, an author of this bill, Mr. Johnson, for two minutes. And the amount of time you're Two, two minutes. The gentleman is recognized for two minutes. Mr. Speaker, as you know, so often around here we vote on half measures, narrow bills that at best address one issue in only a modest way. This is not that bill. This is an opportunity in one vote to shut the border, to keep the government open, and to reduce spending. The five conservative leaders who with me crafted this proposal knew that bold action was needed. Crisis one, we're $33 trillion in debt. That is pushing us toward insolvency. That number has grown by 50% in just the last four years. This bill puts us back on the right track and cuts billions of spending even just in the next month. Number two, a shutdown accomplishes nothing. It does not save a nickel. In fact, it costs the American taxpayers billions. This stopgap funding measure makes sure our government stays open. And number three, 1.8 million illegal crossings at our southern border is unacceptable. This bill puts into place the policies that we know work to secure our border. Mr. Speaker, I'll admit to not understanding fully those who oppose this bill. I do not understand why anyone would choose open borders over an open government. Mr. Speaker, we're here to solve problems. Chaos is not a legislative strategy. And so in a few moments, I will vote to keep the government open, to cut spending, 
and to secure our border, I urge my colleagues to do the same, and I yield. Gentleman yields back. Mr. Gentleman, Speaker, I reserve. Gentleman from Florida reserves. The gentleman from Connecticut is recognized. I, I've, it's almost laughable to think about chaos. I think the majority has demonstrated overwhelmingly in the last several last several days, but the last several months, that an unwillingness to govern, an inability to govern, and chaos, uh, general chaos here. And it's interesting, the gentleman from South Dakota, where last I understood, a little bit like the Northeast in New England, uh, where it gets cold. It gets cold in the wintertime in South Dakota. But the gentleman is happy to see 24,000 individuals not get energy assistance, low-income heating assistance. So there may be taking up a collection of hats and coats and gloves, etc., because they're not going to get their LIHEAP benefits in a cold climate. With that, I reserve. The the gentlewoman from Connecticut reserves the gentleman from Florida is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm now uh, pleased to uh, yield to the gentleman from Wisconsin, Mr. Grothman, for one minute. The gentleman We're here from today Wisconsin because is recognized for one minute. Thank you. We're here today because we think the government's going to shut down on Sunday. Uh, that's because there's supposed to be 12 separate bills that comprise our budget that were supposed to be passed by now. We have passed the four most important. Um, unfortunately, the Senate has not passed any, so we have to move forward from here. We don't know what the shutdown means. I hope the press is on the ball and pays careful attention. If anything is shut down, that President Trump did not shut down a few, a few years ago, right? There's a lot of flexibility for, for uh, presidents to show they're compassionate or not. If there's anything shut down that President Trump doesn't shut down, it's something we have to talk about. Now let's look at the problems we have in this country right now. Two big problems are what's going on at the border. We used to have about 10,000 people a, uh, a month cross the border. We're now over 200,000. We are addressing it. The American public is tired of paying more taxes and spending money and seeing an open border every night. That's one of the reasons why we have to pass the bill. The other reason is we have to make a little bit of dent on the out of control spending. Uh, in any event, I urge my colleagues to vote yes on H.R. 5525. The gentleman from Florida reserves, the gentleman from Connecticut is recognized. I just want to uh, let the gentleman from Wisconsin know 195,000 people are households. It says households, not people. Households are beneficiaries of the LIHEAP program. They will be jettisoned from that program. If you think it's cold in this chamber, head to Wisconsin and you'll know how cold it is in the winter time. Think twice about whether or not you will vote to cut 195,000 people's benefits. I reserve. The gentlewoman reserves. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Now I would like to yield to the distinguished gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Scott, for one minute. The gentleman you, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thought I would go ahead and respond because I know as soon as I sit down, the gentlelady from Connecticut is going to talk about the school teachers in Georgia, which my sister is one of them, and she gets her check from the county in case you didn't know it. And it kind of bothers me that you seem to think that they get the check from the federal government. They actually get paid by the county as do our, as do our sheriff's deputies. But how did we get here? Now, I've heard the left talk about the chaos caucus and that we, that we have, candidly, as Republicans, and what gives them the power? Well, it only takes five of them to create a disruption. And how do five get the power? The five in our party get the power because the 212 of you on the Democratic side are going to vote with them to shut down the government. Now, a continuing resolution is a 30-day piece of legislation that I will admit is not perfect but it is better than a shutdown or the chaos that comes with a shutdown. And the idea that we as Republicans and the American citizens have to eat a $2 trillion deficit or else you're going to shut down the government is absolutely ridiculous. We're not at war, we're not in a recession, and we're in no health emergency. Show a little responsibility. 
The gentleman's time has expired. Mr. Speaker, I would reserve at this moment. The gentleman reserves. I would remind members, please direct your remarks to the chair. The gentlelady from Connecticut is recognized. I reserve. The gentlelady reserves. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's a pleasure to uh, yield to the gentlewoman from New York, uh, Ms. Maliotokis. For how for, much time? Uh, I'm sorry, for one minute, Mr. Speaker. The gentlelady from New York is recognized for one minute. Thank you. I hope the American people are listening right now that the Democrats would rather shut down the government than end an unsustainable and unsafe border crisis that has flooded our streets with fentanyl, an unsustainable flow of illegal immigrants destroying New York City, as Mayor Adams says, and only enriching the drug cartels. This bill is common sense, and everyone should support it. It does three things, things that the American people want. It avoids a shutdown. It cuts excess, so excessive wasteful spending that has led us to a $33 trillion debt, and it secures our border. It stops an unsustainable and unsafe crisis. I urge my colleagues to put taxpaying, hardworking American citizens and their safety first. Heard my colleague from New York City say that this was cruel, that we want to secure our borders. You know what's cruel? In New York City yesterday at one of the migrant shelters, a seven-year-old girl was sexually abused. You know what's cruel? That somebody was stabbed, to, stabbed at the Roosevelt shelter in Manhattan. The fact that there are dozens of crimes being committed and our mayor and you guys Fired. are doing nothing about it. The gentlelady's time has expired. Mr. Speaker, uh, I would actually like to inquire how much time is remaining. The gentleman has four and a quarter minutes. And the gentlewoman from Connecticut has three and a half. Thank you, sir. I would reserve. Gentleman reserves. The gentlelady from Connecticut is recognized. I find it unbelievable that the gentlewoman from New York would support a bill that cuts $1 billion uh, from our ally in the Middle East, and that's from Israel. I reserve. The gentlelady reserves. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. How much time? Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to now yield to the gentleman from Arkansas for one minute. The gentleman from Arkansas is recognized for one minute. I thank the Speaker and I thank uh, the Chairman from Florida. This is an important day, Mr. Speaker. This Congress needs to come together to go back and get our spending under control and also get our border under control. Both are of concern to the American people. We hear about it in our offices every day. Spending's unsustainable. But 200,000 people a month coming across the border and living in this country illegally is also unsustainable. This bill is a product of hard work for weeks to give us time to complete our appropriations work, negotiate with the Senate, while at the same time reducing spending that's been in an avalanche of out-of-control spending for the last two years and secure our border. I stand in support of it, and I urge my colleagues to support it. I yield back. The gentleman up. yields back. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. I reserve, Mr. Speaker. The gentleman from Florida reserves. The gentlelady from Connecticut is recognized. I reserve. The gentlelady reserves. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. Mr. Speaker, now I'd like to yield one and a half minutes to the gentleman from New York, Mr. Molinaro. The gentleman from New York is recognized for one and a half minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. After pouring trillions of dollars into the American economy, after ignoring the crisis at our southern border, after closing schools and forcing kids to learn from home, after denying life-affirming services to young people with disabilities, we have been lectured to about how great, how great these last two years have been for the American people. We have in this very moment the ability to avert a government shutdown and at the same time to finally take some responsibility for reckless, wasteful federal spending. This is no excuse to pick the pockets of hardworking American families who are already overburdened because of inflation, the high cost of gas, the high cost of groceries and the inability to access or find a job, running up their credit cards. We have the ability now to avert a government shutdown, control federal spending, and secure the border. An open border that is taking too many American children's lives because of fentanyl and destroying communities all across this country. The mayor of New York saying the president has ignored his call and that inaction at the border is destroying the city of New York. We have in this very moment the ability to avert a shutdown. 
respect American taxpayers, and secure the American borders. And with that, I yield back. Gentleman yields back. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would just like to inquire uh, to uh, the ranking member of the full appropriations committee if, if she has any further speakers. No, I don't. And so I'm, I yield to you to close. What's that? I close. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I reserve. Gentleman from Florida reserves. The gentlelady from Connecticut is recognized for the purpose of closing. Mm -hmm. What we're looking here is at a piece of legislation that makes a 30 percent cut in programs that have a serious, serious effect on the lives of the people in this country. Let me just lay out some of them, because these have not been talked about so far. The National Institutes of Health will be cut there would be a reduction of 7,000 research grants. I'm a cancer survivor. I think we have people in this chamber uh, on both sides of the aisle who have had a loved one with a cancer diagnosis or Alzheimer's or heart disease, but there's a willingness to cut the National Institutes of Health and thereby cut 7,000 research grants. Let's take a look at our allies and we speak about Israel and Ukraine, and Israel will receive a $1 billion cut in the funds that the U.S. provides, and we talk about Israel as being our closest ally in the Middle East. People should understand what is in this bill. We defund, not we, my Republican colleagues defund law enforcement, reduces drug enforcement administration agents, federal law enforcement officers, eliminates hundreds of state and local law enforcement, and they talk about crime, and they talk about law and order, but there is a willingness to cut the funds in order for us to make our communities safe. Social Security offices, the field offices, would be forced to close down, reduce access to in-person services. People applying for disability benefits will wait additional months for the processing of claims. That is what is in store with this bill if you support it. Wildfire suppression efforts will be hindered. 57% cut, and we know what devastation wildfires have had all over our country. Look at what, what happened in Maui. Unbelievable that they would talk about a bill and, talk, and extol a bill that has such devastating repercussions on the people of this country. They slashed the res resources for the 988 suicide crisis line, opioid use disorder. They talk about worried about an opioid crisis, but let's cut off the avenue and where people can get treatment and help and potentially save their lives. Education, it is an abomination what they will do to education because they're on a march to eliminate public education in the United States of America. That opportunity that all of our families have said, go to school, get an education so that you can succeed. Rural America, let's care about rural America, not cutting the loans and grants for farmers and rural communities. They will make it harder for farmers to access loans and grants, to make home farm ownership more difficult. They cut rural housing, rural utility, broadband, to keep people in touch. And they eliminate health services for rural and underserved families. Two million vulnerable individuals and families will lose access to health care services. They take food out of the mouths of children, families, and seniors. I, I, Mr. Speaker, there needs to be a no vote on this irresponsible continuing resolution. I yield back the balance expired. of my time. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. Mr. Speaker, thank you so much. Oh, so many words. So allow me, Mr. Speaker, to cut through the chase. We have a choice right now. Vote yes to keep the federal government open, to control inflation causing overspending, and to secure the southern border. That's a yes vote. Or vote no 
to shut down the federal government, to keep the narco cartels in control of the southern border. This is pretty simple. You know, government likes to complicate things, and politicians, we like to try to obfuscate reality. This is very simple. We have a choice. I ask our colleagues to do the responsible thing, secure the border, stop out-of-control inflation-causing spending, and yes, keep the government open by voting yes. I yield back, Mr. Speaker. The gentleman yields back. All time for debate has expired. Pursuant to House Resolution 741, the previous question is ordered on the bill as amended. The question is on engrossment and third reading of the bill. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. no. The ayes have it. Third reading. Bill making continuing appropriations for fiscal year 2024 and for other purposes. For what purpose? Does the gentlewoman from Illinois seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I have a motion to recommit at the desk. The clerk will report the motion. Ms. Ramirez of Illinois must recommit the bill, H.R. 5525, to the Committee on Appropriations. Pursuant to Clause 2B of Rule 19, the previous question is ordered on the motion to recommit. The question is on the motion. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. no. The noes have it. The motion is not agreed to. Mr. Speaker, to. I ask for the yeas and nays. The yeas and nays are requested. Those favoring a vote by the yeas and nays will rise. A sufficient number having risen, the yeas and nays are ordered. Members will record their votes by electronic device. Pursuant to Clause 9 of Rule 20, the chair will reduce to five minutes the minimum time for electronic vote on the question of passage. This is a 15-minute vote.
On this vote, the yeas are 210 and the nays are 216. The motion is not adopted. The question is on passage of the bill. Those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, please say no. no. The ayes have it. The bill is passed, and without objection, a motion. The gentlelady from Massachusetts. Yeas and nays. Connecticut is recognized. Yeas and nays. The yeas and nays are requested. Those favoring a vote by the yeas and nays will rise. A sufficient number having risen, the yeas and nays are ordered. Members will record their votes by electronic device. Five minute vote.
On this vote, the yeas are 198, the nays are 232, the bill is not passed. Without objection, a motion to reconsider is laid on the table. I already, it's already over. The House will be in order. The House will be in order. Members, please take your conversations off the floor. You want me to do that? Let's say that first part at least. The chair will now entertain requests for one minute speeches.
From what purpose does the gentleman from New Jersey seek recognition? Without objection, the gentleman from New Jersey is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker. House will be in order, please. Thank Take you, the Mr. conversations Speaker. outside, please. Mr. The gentleman Speaker. from New Jersey will continue. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to honor the late U.S. Senator Dianne Feinstein. As a senator, she served the people of California for 31 years, and she was the longest serving female senator in American history. Senator Feinstein was a true trailblazer. She was the first woman elected to the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. She was the first woman elected to serve as San Francisco's mayor. And, she's the, and as a senator, she was the first woman to chair the powerful Senate rules and Senate intelligence committees. Senator Feinstein leaves a legacy of incredible accomplishment. She wrote the popular assault weapons, assault weapons ban in 1994, a ban that we need to reintroduce today. She helped create the nationwide Amber Alert system to help communities find abducted children. And she helped reauthorize the Violence Against Women's Act. She was a strong advocate for women and the betterment of all Americans. And she will truly be missed in the Senate and in California. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I yield back.